said the politicians are not paying a price, and I think that's our fault. Uh, you mentioned that the, uh, we're leaving $100 billion on the table. I always thought it was $90 billion. But the, the people who are not getting that money are natural allies, and that's clinics, doctors, right. Harris County hospitals, the people who sell consumable uh, medical supplies. These are natural allies to you. Right. That $100 billion has a multiplier effect on it. Once the money is spent in the community, it's probably good for twice as much. Mm -hmm. So it's $200 billion. That's a lot of money right. for this community. The only reason we can not look at that and not complain about it is because we have the oil industry here. If we didn't have that going on, the health care industry would be screaming bloody Mary. How can you leave $200 billion uh, out of our uh, budgets and all this? But all those small doctors, all those clinics are allies. And you have that uh, Phi Beta Kappa organization. Get them to start organizing. Get businesses behind it. Right. Maybe what we'll require it is a greater. And I'll get behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. I'm just wondering, because we talked about, because um, we do the Center for Civic Engagement on our campus okay. here, and we talked a bit about, so service learning comes under the umbrella, but volunteerism is almost like a niche that can kind of be separated. So what's the real, in, in your professional opinion, what do you see the real connection between like the service learning and the civic engagement? Because sometimes people focus on the, the political part of civic engagement, we like to think of it in terms of like a public voice, but what's the real connection here? Because somebody's volunteering is just its own separate little... Or volunteering activity. is seen almost as, uh, as punishment or seen as, as just something to be done every once in a while. I think that what we're, what we're trying to, to kind of teach our students is to see this as, as just part of building a better community. Uh, there is... There are so many opportunities, so many opportunities in the economy, education, attainment. That's we could have done another presentation on lack of educational attainment, but to not wait around for somebody to fix your problems to get more engaged, and you try to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen so many efforts in the San Antonio area where communities have come together there, and that's a, maybe a good uh, a good example of what we might be eventually, because uh, some of the analysis that I saw is that we have a community that is heavily Hispanic, heavily young, but once that community matures, once we've had multiple generations who were born here, then you adopt some of the traditions, uh, you, you assimilate yourself more, you become a little more engaged in, in the political system. Um, did I come anywhere close to answering your question? Well, I mean, I just, I, was, we have like a, a big institutional chart Okay. And we have somebody on our campus who does service learning. Right. But service learning seems like, even though that it's important, I'm not on everything at any rate, I'm not. But right. it just seems like it's its own separate entity. And yet, I don't, there needs to be some kind of development of the idea of how that is incorporated into the whole civic engagement model. And not just, well, I go here for a few hours and I check off a box and okay. Right. Because right? I, I feel like that's, if that's something that's missing. Like it's kind of a misfire or something. Yeah, that, that was Putnam's point, is that we we are kind of drifting away from each other, and maybe it's not something that we, you know, there's so many ways to engage now with our students. When, when we talk about Putnam, the thought of meeting up with your friends for just social reasons um, on a regular basis, the sitting down for dinner, placing a phone call even, right? Who places phone calls anymore? <laughs> All of those seem onerous to them. They want to do something, they want to do it quickly. And I don't know that we ever necessarily get back to the same type of civic engagement that we had in the 1950s that, you know, that, that Putnam really glamorized. Um, I, I don't know quite the answer, though. I don't know how we, we, we get it to that point. Yes? Um, <clears throat> I'm at Lone Star North Harris in Aldine ISD, so I'm very familiar with okay. the demographic that you're talking about and I mean I've worked for years to try to get students more engaged and so on and we're doing all the things you're doing plus some I think actually okay but when you're dealing with students whose parents are working 68 hour weeks at least 
you know, who are pressuring them to drop out of school and get a job to help support the family. Right. It's really hard yeah. to get them engaged. And I, you know, <clears throat> I get it. I understand why. And anyway, I feel your pain, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you have the same challenges we face. And, uh, and when you're talking about government, it seems so impractical. It seems like it. Uh, if you're going to school to learn a profession, a trade, something like that, that you can apply right away and help the family, right, like you right. say, but to really engage them in this material and, and uh, have them see the importance of, uh, of engagement, of, of getting involved to, to seek positive change, is a tough sell sometimes. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Would you go back a few slides or something? I'll sure. tell you one of the stuff or something I want to comment on. You bet. Right there. What happened at the community college in Oregon a few weeks ago was a real tipping point for me. And I, I've tried hard in the classroom for 30 years to be temperate in my language, to try to be objective and fair-minded. Right. But I wonder if one of the things we as classroom teachers need to begin to do is to quit speaking euphemistically. Because when you say lack of political leadership at the state level, what you really mean is Texas is run by a bunch of right-wing Republicans, much of which is, is grounded in religious fanaticism. Right. It's the Greg Abbotts, the Dan Patricks, and the like. The same people who want to put guns in the classroom, don't want to expand Medicaid, right. screw us on funding, disrespect gay people, and until we make a case to, to put these people out of office, none of this stuff is going to change. Now, do we need to start becoming more forthright, or do we violate our role as teachers if we speak the honest truth about this. Because I think, again, am I right? You're simply being euphemistic here. That's I, yeah. really what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. Let <laughs> me, me close it. Let me talk frankly now, okay? Um, yeah, obviously. I think that I, I heard Dan Patrick the other day. Dan Patrick's perhaps the most powerful state leader we have, perhaps more powerful than Greg Abbott. And he, the way he was talking about the Affordable Care Act, he denigrates like that Obamacare.gov site, whatever. You know, he has a responsibility, I think, as a leader to say, look, at, we, we have citizens in this country who don't have health care. There's this way for them to get health care, let them get health care. And uh, the lawsuits, the lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, I think, and then when you look at the results, what did they get us? What did they, right, it was a, a huge waste of taxpayer money. What did it get us? Not very much, right? but you're absolutely right. I, 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 I was going to have that conversation outside of the, the classroom. But, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that there's a lot to that. I think well, we can do both. Your colleagues, because right. to me it's just Thank incredible. You. I think Thank you. you. I know, John. You're my friend, and I, I want to. You know, well, you always will be my friend. No, uh, no. We're going to have to do away with this. And what the point I'm trying to make is that if you only got three percent of the people turning out to vote in a Democrat or Republican primary. You got three percent of those people in the state that's choose the leadership. That's the right. Yeah. And yeah. the failure is about the participation yeah. of political processes. Yeah. It has nothing to do with yeah. who's right wing, left wing. It has to do with who's participating. And if you can't yeah. get the people out, right. yesterday I, when I sub for a class, I asked them, how many people are interested to vote. Hardly anybody yeah. raised their hand. Right. And then how many people of those people even voted? One person of yeah. a class of thirty-two people. Now, the issue is, it's not so we can sit up here and complain until the cows come home. But, but the difference is, we're just not getting out there and, put, and participating in the political process. It's like we're supposed to. That's, but that's a decision, too, that they're making. Their decision is, by not participating, I'm giving my vote over to somebody else. Well, yes, by let me not go. participating, yeah. you're allowing your vote to be That's right. Somebody. Really short on time, so let me take a couple more questions. I just want to make a quick comment. Sure. I, mean, I just read an article on political about a, a county in West Texas where 12 people signed up for you know, to get a, a health care plan. It's not just the, uh, the leaders, it's also the, the political culture of the state. A lot of the folks out there yeah. are very much like the leaders, and therefore, that's, I, mean, I understand what your point is, sir. I mean, I, I would agree, because I'm not from here, but I mean, I certainly think there's a lot of people out there who reflect. It's on us, too. Yeah. We met the enemy, and he is sure. us. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take one last one, and one last comment, and then we're at 5 o'clock. I know we have one more session. Yes. Well, Paul, I, I agree with you um, in terms of everybody, no matter what discipline they teach, should do a, a, a job of every election cycle. Here are the registration forms. Pick yep. them up. And 
and, and pulling up a sample ballot because students who are 17 and 18 and 19 years old are intimidated yep. to go into a ballot. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what it looks like. They can't understand the language. You can pull up a ballot and show them what it looks like. Um, get them comfortable. A culture of voting. Um, and, and if there's one thing that every college professor can do yeah, sure. is do that at the mm -hmm. very least and make them feel less intimidated yes. going into that vote so they know what they're going to, they, they can know Absolutely. what to expect, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I sat in on a uh, workshop with uh, Dr. Steve Murdoch. I don't know if y'all know him from Rice. He was a state demographer after, uh, for a short while. He is predicting in 2050 a lot of the state of Texas will look like District 29. So this is something that, uh, even though we're, we're kind of nestled away over there about 50 miles from here, something that should be of concern for, for all of us, I think, those of us who make the state our own. Okay, thanks so much for your time. Thank great you. afternoon. Thank you. I heard from some of my students who came that some of the stuff from this I'm going to mess with you. I So even though I showed this from the Kaiser Tower data, for example, even though with that knowledge in mind, they still feel like it's just not sure that it's too expensive. They won't qualify for it. So is there a way for people? Wow, I mean, just more information. Maybe someone, I don't know if there's a way to get in touch with someone who's signed up. Or, um, I, I know that this is something that, that is just a big problem. This, uh, just the lack of information and then the, the misinformation that fills in the gaps where yeah. there is information. So just encourage them to keep, to keep encouraging them to do it. Because I told them about the penalties. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to do it every Saturday. Yeah. 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 Yeah.